Good evening, everyone. Welcome to The Way It Is Naturally. My name is Perry. I am your host. And tonight we are going to discuss diet. Back in a moment. I'm going to get right into it. Welcome back, everybody. It is October 9th, and we're into another weekend. I hope everybody is doing fine. Um, what do we got for news here? Not a whole lot of things you know, going on new. So I think we're just going to dive right into the subject tonight. Probably the most talked about subject, uh, to be honest with you, far above training styles and training methods and training secrets. Uh, diet seems to be the most important thing. And if I were to break it down, judging by the questions I get asked and what goes on in the Facebook groups, majority of the dieting questions are by women. Uh, men, when it comes to nutrition, they tend to, some of them do ask, most of them are, they talk about supplements. And I think code for them, the supplements is just drugs, but Sometimes it's actually supplements. <clears throat> so the men will ask about supplementation. The women will ask, you know, about actual dieting. And, of course, it usually leads into, you know, how do I get rid of my, you know, cellulite? How do I get rid of uh, my belly fat seems to stick around to the last? Um, things of this nature. So, you know, your training itself, everything ties in together. And there's so many factors that can affect, you know, how well your nutrition, or we'll use the word nutrition rather than diet, how it can affect, you know, your body weight and how it can fluctuate. You know, if you are always in this state of stress, you're, you know, you don't relax and you don't, you know, and that's usually because, you know, there's a number of things that are whack in your life. You know, you're going to drive up your cortisol levels. Uh, that's going to have an impact. Uh, trust me, all these things, you know, a lack of sleep, um, all these things have a major impact, even though they're not specifically what you're eating, they will have a, a very large impact on your success or failure when it comes to diet or nutrition and your overall goals. Okay, So we use the word diet and that's probably the worst way to go about it because what you really want to do is get yourself to a position. I mean, whether I'm talking to you ladies or I'm talking to men, do you want to be on something that's you know kind of out of the ordinary uh, for you know the rest of your life? No, and that's the key. That is the key answer here. In order to make something last, you have to. It has to be sustainable. And what does sustainable mean? Sustainable means that you could do that theoretically for the rest of your life, and you would feel like you're operating in a normal mode. You know, normal has become quite different. We have to understand. You know, what I like the, you know, people to think about is, you know, you have to go back, you know, 50, 60, 80, 100 years, whatever the case might be. We didn't have to worry about dieting to, for two reasons. First of all, the standards were different. You know, if somebody had a little bit of extra body fat on them, it wasn't the end of the world. Now we come into this, you know, this media blitzed, approach to how, I mean, they have women that think and they have to be, you know, a set of washboard abs on the most men to shame. There's something wrong with that thinking. You know, I mean, if you're an actual athlete and you're, uh, even as a female as an athlete, you don't need to have, you know, a six pack on you. Personally, I don't find it very attractive and only some very hardcore athletes do. But you can still have beautifully toned muscles and lots of musculature and not have that, that hard and grainy look, on, a, especially on a female. And for men as well, if you're not trying to get ready for a show, 
you know, competitive men, I mean, I know I've been in this game for over 40 years, you know, we don't feel like we need to be carrying around this, you know, this, to be honest with you, it's not even a very attractive look uh, all year round. Uh, yes, it's good to have nicely defined muscles. That's well, that's one thing. But this thing that this look that you're seeing nowadays, first of all, I want you to know, none of it is natural. None of it. I can show you what natural abs look like, and they can be quite well defined, but there's a different look to the skin. There's a different look to the whole muscle picture, not just the actual abdominal wall itself. Okay. So what we're trying to attain here is a healthy look that's also functionally healthy, okay, and is sustainable year-round. And that is easily done. I say easily because for me it's, you know, it's been, I've been driving it into people and myself for, for four decades plus. For somebody just breaking in or someone who hasn't been in good shape their entire life, it could seem like a mountain, and I do understand that. But trust me when I tell you that if you don't go down, you know, if you weren't one of these people that have gone down too many roads, yo-yo roads, I'll, I'll call it, okay? Yo-yo roads are basically, you know, you're joining Tops, you're joining Weight Watchers, you're joining Jenny Craig, you're, jo you're joining everything, thinking they have the answer. They don't have the answer. They're selling a commercial product, okay? The answer is in your supermarket, it's in the gym, and it's in your kitchen, and it's in your mind. That's where the answers are. There is no magic, okay? With that said, there are many ways to go about, you know, accomplishing your goal. You can look at it as a two-step process, and I don't have a problem with that. But I want people to know that if we use a diet that is not 100% balanced, basically just a maybe calorically restrictive and, and you know, the right uh, macros, okay? If you don't choose that route, can you get to your goal with another regime? And yes, you can. The problem is you can't keep it up for your life. So therefore, if you're going to take that route, and if you're working with me, first of all, there's only certain things I'm going to allow. Because if you're not going to do it my way, I'm not going to work with you. The simple reason that I want you to succeed. And if you don't succeed, that's going to reflect on me. So there are certain things I just won't do with people. But for those, I mean, like, you know, you talk about, you know, the, I'm talking about the really bizarre things. You know, the soup diet and the grapefruit diet. I mean, just, just you know, fasting for days on end. No, this is stuff that I'm not even going to work with you on, okay? I will consider, you know, adjusting diets around so they're not necessarily tremendously balanced, but it's a, for a short-term goal. But I prefer to use that as the secondary line of defense. And what do I mean by that? I mean, starting off, everybody, if you're, if you're, you know, most people, if they're 10 pounds, I mean, 10 pounds, these are numbers, you know, this is very tough for me to explain to somebody, but 10 pounds overweight? And what is overweight? I mean, 10 pounds, if you're looking at yourself, and let's say the difference is 10 pounds between being defined the way you want to look as opposed to the way you are now, okay? That's very tough to find that number, but let's say it's 10 pounds. 10 pounds is nothing. But let's say for those people who are 20 pounds and more, right up to the extreme obese. Especially the extreme obese, you could definitely take a balanced diet, which is reasonably calorically restrictive. It can't be starvational. A starvational basically means if you go on too restrictive a calorie diet for too long, your body will begin to shut down, and it's going to do two things. It's going to slow down your, your BMR, okay? It's going to start to cause you to actually to, um, uh, to basically burn lean muscle tissue, okay? That's not a good thing, because what, what's the end result there? You end up maybe with a weight loss, but you're still looking saggy and sloppy, and, and you don't know why, and this is the reason. You're not actually burning. Your, your body says... I don't understand. All your body's functions require on energy, whether that be, and that's what your fat stores are. You know, yes, you have, um, you know, glucose as well. Glucose is more for a short-term energy, whereas your fat stores, you know, if you think about it in terms of man and as a creation, 
Fat stores is what gets you through the rest of your life. Carbohydrate stores is what gets you through your day. Okay, That's a very oversimplified way to look at it, but it, to make it make sense to most people. Okay, So you need to have, your body wants to fight that urge to lose those fat stores. But the problem here is, which I'm getting to my second point now, we become such a sedentary society. Go back 50, 60, 70 years, the majority of the population was not white collar. They were blue collar. You worked hard. You worked hard for everything. And if you weren't working hard at your job, you worked hard at home, you were always working hard. Now what are people doing? Some of them aren't even, you know, some of them don't even have their kids in sports or nothing. They play on computers. They pick up musical instruments. And that's all they do. They don't work physically hard. And that includes parents as well as children. So we're fighting many battles, okay? So what do you do, what do, you do to upset that apple cart? You have to make some lifestyle changes, okay? Since we don't get the ability to be... Uh, moving around as much, uh, you know, we're too sedentary, you know, through our work or through be able to just sustain our lives, you know, many people, you know, farm for a living, you grew your own food, you did this, you did that, you know, you didn't get everything, you know, go down to the grocery store and pick everything off the shelves and, you know, you actually had to create stuff for yourself or you starved to death, okay, so now things are changed, now we just go, you know, we get X amount of money from our job, we go there, we get pick this and this off the shelf. Many people don't even learn how to cook anymore. They just empty the box in, away you go. There's supper. So what am I trying to tell you? I'm trying to tell you that no matter what anybody preaches or what I tell you, you need to make some changes, permanent changes in your life. But let's start off with step one. That's what we need to do. You need to have steps, okay? First, first thing to keep in mind is when you're trying to attack your nutritional the nutritional angle of your, of your goal is you have to have a goal. You need to know where you are, and you need to know where you want to be. You know, those, that's your long-term goal. So you need to have a series of where you want to be, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, like that type of thing. What that does is it creates these short-term hurdles that you get to go over and mentally, you get that satisfaction. I did that. You know, I dropped 10 pounds in my first two weeks. You know, I dropped another five pounds, you know, a month later. I dropped, you know, these things are all, these are your rewards. They are mental rewards, which will register in your brain, okay? And your brain is what has, you have to keep happy. You keep your brain happy, you keep your body happy, okay? Because your brain controls everything, okay? So... You know, we need to approach things. The best way is a balanced approach right from day one. So you can do that being cal calorically restrictive, okay? And then what happens with many people sometimes, and I'm not talking, you know, in a few days or a couple of weeks here. Your body does not adjust that quickly, okay? Especially if you're tremendously obese, your body will not, you know, stop burning body fat in a matter of a few weeks or a month. If something like that has happened, it's something you are doing. You're not being honest with yourself. You haven't cleaned up your diet the way you th thought you were. The ghost, uh, the ghost elements of a diet, I like to use that term, ghost elements, can drive a diet from here to there in no time. And those are regularly like, through certain condiments or not knowing really what the calories are. Some foods are so calorie dense, especially if they are, you know, fatty foods, you know, you wouldn't believe how very little amounts to quite a bit in the way of calories. So, you know, it's a, it's a bit of a chess game because those calories have to be reasonably, um, reasonably low and restrictive in order to, you know, create a, a fat loss. You know, I don't want to get too detailed at this point, you know, because I do also tell people that you can, you can both gain lean muscle mass and uh, on, on a calorie deficit, but you can also get leaner even if you're not on a calorie deficit, depending on how your macros are and what you're doing for exercise. But to keep it simple and for people, you know, just breaking in, you know, to the, breaking into the idea of, you know, having an active lifestyle now, 
you know, go with a, a mild caloric deficit, not a major one, okay? And I'm not talking about the people like on my 600 pound life. You know, that, those are special cases, you know? And there's a lot of factors there that, you know, somebody's health and, and life basically hinge on. So you don't want to be too abrupt with somebody like that. I'm talking about people that are maybe anywhere from about 20 pounds to 35 or 40 pounds overweight. You know, the same approach is where you start. So, you know, you, your calorie, caloric restrictive, you know, the, the typical regime of being, you know, uh, moderate protein, moderate carbohydrate, low fat, will get you there to a certain point, okay? <clears throat> With that said, maybe two months into it, you know, let's say, you know, you're, you're training hard. Let's say, you know, you're, I'm being, you're being honest, you're training hard, you know, you don't have all these hidden calories, uh, you seem to be doing all things right, but things seem to be coming to a grinding halt. Then it's time to kick in plan B or plan C. And what those things can be is you can alter around your macronutrients, okay? You can also, also alter around when you eat your foods, you know, which, which foods with the higher main constituents, uh, yeah, uh, you eat at certain times of the day, for instance, you know, I will always tell people that, you know, I don't want you on a zero fat diet. That's just not healthy all the way around. Your body and your brain in particular needs fat to function, okay? Uh, you know, your skin, you know, there's, there's so many, so many organs that require on certain amounts of body fat, okay? Um, but, you know, being reasonable about it. So maybe plan B for you, for example, might be to make sure that you get a triple of fat in in your morning meals. Maybe meal one, meal two. Okay? And then you don't take in next to any fat for the rest of the day. This is another avenue I've used on myself for competition. I've used on other clients. It's an idea. Okay? Then from there, maybe you can say, maybe some people, you know, are excuse me, hell-bent on tradition, and they're eating three meals a day. Excuse me. Maybe it's time to go to five and six. But what constitutes a meal? You know, meals do not have to be these, you know, four-portion plates that you see all the time. You know, they can be much simpler than that and can still be considered a meal. You know, you can easily digest, you know, three to five hundred calories in something very simple, you know, and consider it a meal. The other thing too, maybe maybe go to simpler food combining. You now some people say, you know, you know, what I mean by that is, you know, some meals are almost entirely a protein, some are entirely, you know, a little higher in fat, some are almost completely carbohydrate, okay? Some people are dead set against that, thinking that you need to have the food combinations together. My argument against that is, as I've said before, your body is never stagnant. It's fluid. Using the analogy I did before, getting anything in your body needs to get up to a therapeutic level, and then it, you know, it's the, it plateaus out and stays constant. So there's always these elements in your system. Yes, you know, certain things get metabolized, they're in and out, but the, still the main constituents, the main building blocks of those nutrients are still within your system. So you don't necessarily need to have them at every meal. You don't, okay? So some people, maybe that can be the next step up for you. Now these are short-term changes, right? Just short-term, just to keep the machinery going. So let's say, you know, you're able to get past that, that plateau. Then you revert back to where we were before. Once again, your body's thinking, this is something different. So keep going. That loss continues to happen. Okay? So there's the thing. Okay? Start with a plan. If you can, start balance. Okay? And then you bring in plan B, plan C, plan D, whatever it takes to keep it going. Okay? Have a plan. Know where it is and know exactly where it is you are. If you don't know how many calories you're actually taking in on a regular basis, how are you going to fix the problem? If, if for example, you believe you're only taking in 1,800 calories, but in actual fact, you're taking in, you know, 3,600, and you'd be surprised how easy it is to do that. Does anybody even have an idea of what something like a, a Big Mac is? I, I believe a Big Mac is 
closing in on eight or 900 calories, maybe more. And some other burgers are even higher than that. For some people, that's, that's two-thirds of their daily caloric intake. You, know, you need to think about these things, okay? You need to know exactly what it is you're doing. And I always say to people, you know, take two weeks. Write down everything. If you can, weigh it. You know, do your best to be as honest and exact. Then you can look through, and there's so many, you know, I use MyFitnessPal. It's a free app. Download it, use it. It will tell you exactly what you're taking in on a regular day. It has a, a database of products, and everything you could ever find in a supermarket, I guarantee you is there. Even stuff from ma most of the major restaurants. Okay? All I want you to do is be fairly exact about what you do for two weeks, then you assess. You go, okay, well, here, I thought I was only taking in you know, 1,200 calories, but I was taking in 2,100 calories. Lights go on, right? Things start to, things start to change. You start to think differently, all right? So there's, there's part of the change in the game plan. So let's switch gears here and say, you know, you want to take a different approach. And there aren't too many approaches that I, I endorse. Uh, I've had come in contact with people recently, you know, using the keto diet. And it's probably the most talked about diet these days, maybe even the most talked about diet period. Okay. Uh, does it have its benefits? Yes, it does. Does it have its drawbacks? Yes, it does. You know, right off the bat, so anybody knows, if you are a diabetic or on other types of medications, you really need to discuss things with your doctor because you can get yourself in a whole heap of trouble uh, on a keto diet, okay? There's definitely ways to work with it. And as a matter of fact, a keto diet, and depending on whether you're type 1 or type 2, can actually help you uh, become non-insulin dependent, okay? So something to think about. There's pros and cons. But let's say you want to do utilize a keto diet. Here's the problem I saw, I've seen with most of it. You know, think about this, okay? High fat diets, good and okay in the short term, you know, and having a reasonable amount of fat in your diet is okay. But you can have that in a balanced diet and be in a more healthy, you know, in a healthy balance. Keep in mind, you know, there's people that, you know, say they have, you know, if you have a gluten problem, that's valid. A true gluten problem. Some people just say that. They don't have a gluten problem at all, okay? They just have an eating problem. They have a portion control problem, okay? Realize what your problem actually is. So the problem with a keto diet is I don't believe that it's sustainable over your life, okay? And I can say that because I've never seen anybody or even talked to anybody that does a, a, a completely straight keto diet, meaning they are in... Keto, you know, in, in, in a state of ketosis all the time, which is the only way, that's what a keto diet is. You're relying on ketones in order to uh, supply you with energy, in order to, you know, keep yourself functional. And, you know, on a, gener on a traditional keto diet, you're generally below uh, 40 grams of carbohydrate on a day. Ideally, in around 20 grams is what they're actually, you know, calling for. That's very, very low. So if you're not supplying yourself energy by another means, meaning through ketones, you're in trouble. Most people that I've met are in the middle. They're bouncing around all the time. So they, they get an initial fat loss or body weight loss. I wouldn't say fat because I guarantee you some of them are losing, losing lean muscle tissue. Because of, and that's because of two things. They're so focused in on fat that they don't even have their protein content up high enough. And the other thing is, on that diet, 99% of the people I've seen or I, I see right stuff on keto diets, they take very poor choices in fats. Somehow or another, people got the idea that you could eat, you know, I've seen people, you know, writing videos, uh, doing videos on YouTube. And they're going to the supermarket and they're getting all this deli meat and, you know, piles and piles of bacon. And, you know what? First of all, all the pro if you talk to anybody, a real expert on a keto diet, the super processed meats and that, they're not supposed to be in your diet at all. Okay? Bacon, even though it's a cured meat, you know, naturally cured bacon would be the best. It's okay in certain quantities. Okay, Getting your fats through natural sources, that's the whole idea, getting your fats through natural sources. That's some natural healthy oils, 
So it'd be avocado oil. Uh, it can be, you know, there's an arrangement, assortment of healthy oil, olive oil, you know, avocados, you know, real butter, not margarine, real butter, you know. And then, you know, some good protein sources, you know, fish high in protein, especially things like salmon and mackerel, you know, very high in, in only omega 3s, okay. Very good fats, natural fat sources, okay. That's the whole idea. People skip that part. And also, they don't understand that because you're taking in a high, a high fat diet, those calories really add up, meaning your portions are very small. You still, you know, they talk about you can eat as many calories as you want. That's a load of baloney. If you eat all the calories you want, because they say, this is, I honestly, I just read this before going out, because I was just getting some background knowledge. I wanted to be as prepared for you as possible. And I'm reading in more than one place that, you know, eat when you want, as much as you want, and when you're not hungry anymore, then you stop eating. I don't buy that. You can't tell me that somebody with a BMR of 2,000 calories a day who can easily, on a high-fat diet, swallow four to 5,000 calories in a day is going to continue to lose weight. No, they're not. Your body is going to make that adjustment. I guarantee you, you are going to start storing body fat. Don't, you can't say it's impossible because it's not. Okay. So some common sense. Make sure that you are actually in ketosis. That means you don't get to have, you know, eat, you know, reasonably amounts of good quality fats and proteins, you know, for the uh, for the, most of the day, and then eat, you know, half a plate of pasta, or you know, pasta and bread, or you know, a, a yam and some whatever. And also remember that all your vegetables or your root vegetables. You know, those are very starchy vegetables. You can't have those. Only the above-ground vegetables even qualify in a real keto diet. Okay? Just what I'm trying to tell you is you need to educate yourself. If you're going to take an avenue that is not based on a balanced diet, which would be, you know, moderate to moderate high protein. You know, I'm talking about just the average everyday Joe, not necessarily the athlete. Okay? Moderate to moderate high uh, protein moderate carbohydrate, and low moderate fats. That's their best approach. Be in a slight caloric deficit, okay? Approach it that way, and then worry about step two, step three, step four to get past your plateaus, okay? So summing it up, that's the best way to go. B, make sure you have a plan. Know how many calories you're taking in. to stay constant. Know, you know, have a rough idea where you want to get to, okay? The other thing I'll throw in here is do not tie yourself to the scale. Look in the mirror. Okay. Also, you know, if you're uh, now if you're starting to train hard, it's going to make it all the much easier. Then you, you know, you on a calorie, your calorie uh, distribution should be slightly different. Slightly higher in proteins, moderate on carbohydrates now, and low on fat. That's where you should start. Okay. These are your best guidelines. You know, if you want more detail, you know, you can always get a hold of me uh, on my Facebook page, Bull Fierce Training. I invite you to join me on YouTube at Bull Fierce Training as well. You can go through a number of my videos. I'll be starting into an actual exercise demonstration. I've been going into exercise demonstration, but through my training app that I use with, with some clients, but I'm slowly cataloging all the exercises being done by myself. And um, that's going to be uh, available to you as well. Um, you can also contact me through my website, which is bull-fiercetraining.com. You can look at and see what I have for uh, training and nutritional programs there. You can always contact me through uh, as well at Instagram and Twitter. And you know, I always more than willing to, and I do, go into a lot of the Facebook groups. And I offer good sound of advice, good sound advice, Based on over 40 years of training, uh, I, you know, I know what it's like to be a 17-year-old kid, which is what it was for me first time I walked into a gym. I also know what it's like to be, you know, 20 and, you know, actually 18 and a half when I hit my first show. You know, I know what it's like to be in your 20s, your 30s, 40s, now my 60s. And I know all that. I've been there. I still hit it hard. I hit it harder than most young people or most people, certainly most people in the gym, period. You know, because it's been a lifestyle, and that's what I do with people. 
I change what they, you know, their idea of just getting this end result into a lifestyle result. You know, and that's the way to that's the way to have long term success, success that basically never ends. Okay. So I want you to, you know, check out those avenues. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, once again, my name is Perry. This is the way it is naturally. And, you know, get out there. Keep it natural. Train bull fierce. You'll attain, you'll attain your goals, I guarantee you. Use some common sense and stay away from the drugs. Bye for now.